went and then I down nose dive and I was like sitting there. I was like, please don't. Hi guys, I'm Shane Masson and welcome to Mad Custom Cubs. So that was a brutal day and I'll get back to you and I'll tell you the rest of the story. But right now I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and how I got into fabricating and building airplanes. I started back uh, right out of high school. I loved anything that had a motor in it. I was racing motocross. I was always modifying and customizing snowmobiles. I got my, uh, started my apprenticeship as a small engine motorcycle mechanic and it just, led on and on to that. But if we're doing that for a living, I found it was hard to make a decent living and to afford and to play with all those toys. So I had to step the game up a little bit. And then I got into the oil field. The oil field gave me the money to be able to have some of the toys and uh, play with them. But it wasn't the perfect family life that I, I liked to be home every time I was always gone and working. So I tried combining them. And so I kind of, as much as I worked as hard as I could to get the tools I needed uh, for fabricating. And then in the oil field, I also started my millwright apprenticeship and that I learned how to use a milling machine, lathe, welding techniques, TIG, MIG, all that, and uh, got into motorcycles. That's where it all started, customizing motorcycles. And that's probably why you see a lot of the planes I'm building now, I like putting in that that hot rod or rat rod kind of look or modifying. Because a lot of guys are building airplanes, they're all airplane looking. I like going something totally extreme and different. And that's what got me into building airplanes. I always had a passion for aviation. And that what led me to get my pilot's license. So I continued, I worked as hard as I could, got my, my pilot's license. And then before I even finished my pilot's license, I'm like, I was into looking at airplanes. I was always looking up on barnstormers and everywhere to look for an airplane. I ended up finding one in Louisville, Kentucky. I bought my first airplane on eBay. And uh, then it was like, wow, uh, what do I do now? So, and I didn't even have my pilot's license yet. So I contacted a friend, Steve, and I said, hey, Steve, I bought this airplane on eBay. It's down in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, I need some help getting it back because I don't have my license yet. So he said, yeah, I'd love to help you. We made the trek down there, uh, down in Louisville, Kentucky. We get in, get to the hangar. We pull up in our car, and also I look, there it is. I was like, oh, yeah. All of a sudden, these birds start flying out of the engine cowling. I'm like, oh no, Wh whatever. It's my first airplane. I was so pumped about it. Uh, we, we spent a day or two going over it. Steve kind of did some high speed taxi and did a couple circuits with it. He's like, let's do her. We had an extra handheld radio and everything. We made the jaunt from Louisville, Kentucky, all the way back up to Canada here. And when I got it home, that's when the work started. It had an 0290 D2 engine. We found corrosion in it. The fabric was in rough shape. I rejuvenated while the engine was getting rebuilt and made it into a float plane and put uh, an 0320 back in it. We eventually found out that uh, a pacer, well, it was a tri-pacer, a pacer didn't quite have the get up and go that I wanted and the load I could carry off of floats. So it was Bushmaster time. That's where the passion started. I started building that plane first, got into uh, Bushmaster. And then after a year of flying it, I went for a ride in a Super Cub. And that's like the Ferrari. <laughs> like I just loved it because where I could land and take off and the visibility being tandem. I'm like, I, 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 wanna, I want a Super Cub. So I ended up selling my Bushmaster and bought my first Super Cub and it was, it was made in heaven. That's what I wanted to do.
Well, now let's go back to that nice sunny but windy day. And I thought I could take my beautiful Super Cub and land it like in five feet, 10 feet. And like we had 40 mile an hour winds and like my stall speed's like 30 mile an hour, especially ground effect, I could get even slower. So I was coming along, but being a green pilot, watching too much YouTube videos, I, I just took a gust of wind right coming down close to the ground. And another mistake I did, I tried correcting for that with not my rudder. So I tried a gust of wind, wing went down, tried correct and tried giving it power, boom, and, and then I down, nose dive, and I was like sitting there. I was like, please don't tip, please don't tip. And all set, like it was like 15, well, it felt like 15 minutes, and then just boom. And I'm like, oh, that just cost me money. <laughs> so I crawl out of my airplane, and it was like, no matter of fact, there's people lined up on the road. And this happened just in the field here. And uh, like they called 911, uh, fire department was coming. I'm like, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. And it was the worst day of my life. I was, and then I came running in telling my wife and she wanted me to sell the airplane right away or well, fix it or get out of aviation anyway. What a day that was. But that's where you gotta take the positives out of something like that and, and go with it. So first, first thing, I, like I know it made me a better pilot. Like anytime I'm coming in low and slow like that, I just say in my head, rudder, 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 rudder. And then even when I got into crop dusting, that, that was my key, like is rudder. Whenever you're getting problems and stalling, it's like rudder to correct, speed up that wing so it's not stalling. And then the second thing is, I'm like, I, I gotta rebuild this thing. I gotta fix it. So I got on the phone and started calling people, finding who, how I can get the fuselage repaired, how about the wings and stuff. And that's where I met uh, a lot of guys that now I call really good friends and working partners and building airplanes every day. It took me over a year, roughly, to rebuild that airplane. And uh, <laughs> so I had so much fun building that airplane. I was halfway through, it's like, I want to put me, I got to try these flaps out. Oh, what about this suspension? What about this gear leg? Gear leg? And then I had 30, um, 31s. I'm like, oh, what's 35, like 35 inch bush wheels. So I was bouncing back and forth. I finished it and I'm like, I enjoyed it so much. I'm like, I want to build another cub. So I put it up for sale. It didn't take long. I had two guys actually interested in it. The one guy that uh, took it away and went to another good home. The other guy says, well, can you build me one just like it? I'm like, heck yeah. And so I started mine and building this other customers. And then in the meantime, I was, also, I was still working in the oil field too. And the biggest thing that we were kind of that oil and gas was going downhill pretty bad. And the company was kind of on edge. And I'm like, I'm just gonna keep doing this. Like I wasn't too worried if something happened, I would still be able to make buy or whatever do doing building airplanes and yeah eventually the company I was working for did go under and I it kind of gave me the push to do this full time the 31st of January I said okay I'm done I'm going to build airplanes and then COVID hit man <laughs> I, I had it was exciting and nervous I had a couple guys put their projects on hold but I made it through that loop and now I've, I'm booking two years in advance. So aviation's my passion, guys. And follow along to see my tweaks and my little spin on aviation to make something different. I like taking the rat rod or the motorcycle industry and combining it with an airplane. And I love horsepower. So behind closed doors, I got this huge project. I can't reveal everything about it yet, but what I can tell you, there's gonna be giveaways. Then someone's gonna walk out of here with their pilot's license. So stick around and let's make this happen. Oh. 
I'm okay. Cameraman never dies. <laughs> <laughs>